Hey everyone, it's Derek from Nerd or Die, and I'm happy to bring you the setup guide for one of our most ambitious stream packages yet, Stonefire. Let's get right into it. Stonefire is a complete stream package that's now available in the Nerd or Die shop in both an animated paid version as well as a static free version. Let's take a quick look at what comes in the full package. The package was designed to make it easy to adjust the colors of the items included so that you can choose the colors that best fit your theme. First, we have a screen design for the start of your stream, an intermission screen design, and an outro, all of which are animated and allow you to customize what icons and what messages are included in your stream. Next, the overlay includes individual items and preset layouts, meaning you can add in your own overlay quickly or use parts of the design as you see fit. It also has design specifics for League of Legends and Dota 2. These were designed with the intention to show as much of the game as possible. Stonefire also includes animated alerts that will work with pretty much any animation platform. The alerts with Muxy include a one-click setup as well as custom sound files. The package comes with WebM videos for each type of alert that you'll need. And last but not least, we have panels which include illustrated icons and all the icons can be found in the package download. The free version of this package is also found on the Nerd or Die store. It includes static overlays as well as the panels. So check out that item if you want to give this overlay a quick trial run. Let's get started with setting everything up. After you download the Stonefire package, extract it using 7-zip or WinRAR onto your PC. The folder includes a helpful readme file that will give you the basic information about this package. One thing you should do before beginning is install the included fonts as they'll be used later in this setup. Let's begin with the intro, intermission, and outro setup process. I'll show you how to handle just the intro, but the techniques I use can be applied to each scene. First, let's create intro scenes in OBS. Next, let's add in a new media source, and I'll navigate to my Stonefire folder, and in the Screens folder, I'll see the video for starting, ending, and intermission. The intermission folder contains variations of the video to allow you to customize this exactly to the style that you'd like to use. I'm going to add in the streamstarting.webm file and make sure it's set to loop. Next, I'll add in a text source and call it stream name. I'll hit select font and I'll find the font Azul. Leave the style as normal and enter a large text size. Remember, you can always scale the text down in OBS Studio, but when you scale up, it may become a bit blurry. So let's enter something like 272, click OK, and then type the stream name that you have for your channel into the text box. And for color, let's just use a solid white and hit OK. Positioning the text in the center can be difficult by just eyeing it. So let's go into OBS Studio settings and under the general tab, we'll make sure that source alignment snapping has everything enabled. This will allow us to click and drag this text file and have it snap to the horizontal center. It'll also be helpful with setting up the icons and other text files we're about to add. Let's add an image. Navigate to the icons, large folder, and then for this example, we'll choose Discord. Let's also add another text source using the Azul font, 72 size, white color, and we'll type in join our Discord in the text box. Once that's added in, I'll click on the Discord icon inside the preview area and use the arrow keys to nudge the item over. Next, while holding the control key, I'll select the Discord icon and the text source, and then I'll drag it down to a position where I'd like it. With snap enabled, it should be easy to center this item. From here, I could add in more icons and more text sources as needed. I find the easiest way to do this is by hitting copy and paste for each source. You can do this by right-clicking a source to copy then paste, but make sure to use paste duplicate here for it to work properly. From here, I select both new sources and click and drag them over. Or I can just select them and use the arrow keys to nudge them slowly over. Now you can go into the properties of each source and change out the text and the image that's used. So I'll quickly set up one for Twitter. After that, I'll recopy and paste the sources from the middle and move them over to the right side. Again, if I like, I can use the arrow keys or the clicking and dragging method. I personally like to use the arrow keys to move just the icon and then dragging to move both at the same time. However, if you'd like to be 100% precise, I recommend using the arrow keys here. 
But remember that you have to click on the source in the preview panel of OBS Studio before you can use the arrow keys to nudge them. Alternatively, you can open up the transform properties inside of each source by right-clicking, going to transform, edit transform. The top numbers here represent the X and then the Y value for your source's position. The Y value can be useful if you wanna make sure that everything is perfectly aligned vertically. You can simply copy the number from what you want to align with and then paste it into the next source's transform values. As I mentioned, with all these techniques used here, you should have no problem setting up the other screens. Next, let's move on to the overlays, which is a lot simpler to set up. I'll also talk about shifting the colors here as well. In the overlay folder, you'll wanna look through and find out which layout best fits your theme. If you wanna quickly add in an overlay and get it up and running, one of the preset layouts can be added in as a looping media source. But let's take a look at a more advanced setup. Start by making a new scene called overlay. Add in a new media source that's called the Supporter section. I'll go into the Supporter Info folder and choose Stacked. I'll select the Supporter bar, Stacked Left, No Icons, and set it to Loop. The reason I chose this one without icons is because when I shift the colors of the source, I don't want the icons to have their colors shifted as well. I'll quickly position this where I'd like, then add in a new image source, which I'll call icons. Looking to use the free overlay, you will add in the items as images instead of media files. With the overlay item added, let's shift the color. Right click the media source and go to filters. Let's add in a color correction filter. And the easiest way to change the colors is via the hue shift slider. I'll drag it all the way over to the right and we'll get a cool purple effect. Let's quickly add in a webcam frame as well. We can do this as a new media source named webcam frame and we'll set it to loop. Next, let's apply the color filter to this and we'll simply right click the supporter source, select copy filters and then select the webcam frame source and right click and hit paste filters. It should now have the same effect we added before. You'll want to add in your webcam behind this new webcam frame source and crop and scale it as needed. To add in the text files properly, simply create a new text source. Let's choose the appropriate font and put the size at 36 and color to white. Feel free to add in an outline if you think it's needed. Let's type in any word into the box so that we can first align this text. Drag the text where you like, Right click the source to copy and then right click again and use paste duplicate. And then let's drag each one down to the proper location. Now let's go back into the source's properties and select read from file. This will allow us to choose which text files from the Muxi ticker or the Streamlabs stream labels that you'd like to add in. Navigate to the folder where you store these text files and select the appropriate file for each text source. I'll quickly do this for one text file. Now with this done, we can add this overlay scene into our other scenes as needed. Personally, I like to keep this type of scene separate from my game setup scenes and use the scene source feature to place it in the scenes that I use for my live broadcast. So with that done, let's move on to adding in the alerts. For Streamlabs, we've included WebM files. You'll need to upload the proper WebM into your Streamlabs alert box. It's also important to click the layout section that has the overlay text in the middle of the image. Feel free to customize the other settings as needed. These alerts must have the messages disabled. To add these into OBS Studio, add in a browser source and paste in your widget URL. I recommend a width of 1920 and a height of 480 for your browser source. Your sound files can be found in the alert sound files folder. For Muxy, simply click the Muxy one-click setup URL and hit copy and start editing. Then grab the alert package URL and paste it into OBS Studio as a browser source. I recommend a width of at least 620 and a height of 480. Also, you may want to adjust the font size as needed. Run a few tests to make sure you're getting the proper look for your stream. Finally, let's add the easiest item, the panels. Go to your Twitch page while logged in and turn on edit panels. For a new or existing panel, click add image, then choose the proper panel that you'd like to add. And that's it. With that, you should now be able to set up your stream with the stone fire package. There's a lot to this item, so please let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. And feel free to stop by my stream as well. I'm live weekdays at 5 p.m 
and always willing to answer any questions about our items. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you're looking for more great streaming and video game related content, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.